I was thinking about how Jesus prays perfect prayers before the father and yet he still has to wait. Hebrews 7 says Jesus lives forever to intercede with God on your behalf. And so you have Jesus here, okay, praying perfect prayers, interceding on your behalf day and night. And yet again, he even has to wait. I can imagine what it was like for Jesus to be in the earth begging the father for that cup to pass from him okay he is at one of the worst points of his life so stressed that blood vessels were popping and secreting like sweat which was actually just really prophetic for his body and what he would experience with the crown of thorns being put on his head and the blood streaming down and so here perfect Jesus is praying perfect prayers to the Father. And what's so incredible about this scene in the gospel is that the Father doesn't even respond to him. So this is when you, you're you praying to the Lord, you're seeking the Lord three times, three different night seasons of, of, of your, your soul for, for this cup to pass from you, if this thorn can be removed from your side. And then God doesn't even respond. Now, granted for Paul, He comes to the understanding that, you know, God's grace is sufficient, which is similar to the understanding of what Yeshua came to, which is nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Right. This isn't my story. You see, that's you trying to save your old life. He was trying to save the life he knew as Yeshua HaMashiach, but you have to lose your life to find it. And he spoke of this and there are transformational soul deaths on various levels. And so he's like, nevertheless, not my idea of the story, not the way I thought this character should play out. No, not my will over imposing you, the author and finisher of this. And so the weight or the perceived delay is only because the timing of the promise is just as important as the promise itself. And our ego life makes us forget that we are actually characters playing in the movie of life, that we are actually images playing in the mind of God, that there is already a plan for your life and a purpose for said plan of your life. But don't worry. Guys, like I've designed the entire script, storyline, plot, and so on onto the expected end of your character's role. And I've written it all to prosper you, the real you, the soul of you, the you that exists in many forms and many experiences. I mean, side note, <laughs> do you really think Yeshua, Jesus, the, the Lamb of God, was the only one with a soul experience as an animal? Come on now. I mean, do you really think that, you know, we talk about the star of David or even Jesus, the 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 bright and morning star, you are you think they're the only star seeds? And so this plan I have designed it all to prosper you, says the Lord, and not to harm you and to bring you hope unto your expected end. And so It's not that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous are not availing much. They are. It's just you don't understand the timing. And that's why you have to get to the point where you can say like others in scriptures that my times are in the Lord's hands. It's this place of releasing, letting go of your own agenda, the way you think it should be when you think it should be that way. And then you will be able to perceive the times and the seasons based on God's calendar. And so get off man's calendar because you're not in man's story. You're in God's story. And you have to get to the point where you know that 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 you know know it. You know it that those that wait 
upon the Lord. See, you got to allow yourself to accept the timing of each scene. No actor shoots the entire movie all in one take. No, you need breaks in between. You got to eat. You got to rest. You got to at least go to the bathroom. (laughs) And so Martha, Martha, you are busy with many things, but few things are needed. Really only one. Sit at my feet and learn of me. Learn from the way I did it in the earth. Learn from the way the father responded to my prayers. Like, you know, I I think about Yeshua's prayer in John 17, where he says to the father, father, I desire them. Talking about you (laughs) and the love you would give back to him as the bride. He said, I desire them that they would be with me where I am. And now he prayed this over 2,000 years ago, shoddy, for you. (laughs) And he's been waiting for this very moment in time. And so I want to encourage you to continue to affirm your soul in the waiting. Saying just like the psalmist, that I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.